Okay, I'm gonna try to do a better presentation on using, specifically on using Wigat to um, and Bash shell scripting to um, download historical genealogical documents in an automated fashion. You know, if you know the link, and maybe if at all possible, I'll post uh, just the raw text of what's in my shell script. That way, I could easily be copied and pasted. Um, and hopefully I'll remember to put that link, if I have one, in the comments section of my uh, video. Because uh, I didn't really do too well yesterday, and hopefully I'm speaking loudly and clearly enough, and I'm understandable, and hopefully I'll be able to get all the things in there that will actually be of some help. I guess I'll just start out with an overview of what I'm going to do, and then I'll go do it. Because when I looked at my video, it seemed like I just started doing something I really didn't explain that well what I was doing. This situation serves as an example of what can be done and applied to other situations. So <coughs> um, you're going to want to massage the methodology used to fit the situation you find yourself in, you know, if at all. Uh, it happens to be um, in the United States um, when um, early when the pilgrims arrived in New England in an area that's now Massachusetts, specifically the Salem area, um, they started recording deeds of land transactions between different people. Sometimes it would be father and son, sometimes it would be unrelated parties, and sometimes you can get some clues as to what was going on, or some genealogical clues that may help you solve an overall bigger picture um, mystery. And uh, one mystery, uh, specifically for, for my situation, is um, was just sorting out uh, James Chichester's life. Um, uh, the, the man that first appeared in, in Taunton on the list of eligible men to bear arms, and I believe later went up to um, Huntington. Uh, it's a whole different subject, um, but just in short, there's there's some dispute or was some dispute um, at least in my mind there's no dispute it's the same person and uh, getting this one little piece of information off the Salem deeds and interpreting it verbatim and finding a few other uh, pieces that related to him uh, help fill in the bigger picture and come up with a solution. So anyway, there there are times when you're going to want to get as a genealogist you're going to want to be able to get original documents off the internet. Sometimes they haven't been transcribed in the jurisdiction or the county or whatever they call it in your country, maybe Shire, um, has archived historical documents and put them up on the internet available for download and they really haven't been examined all that much perhaps by or, or enough for your purposes by um, the by local genealogists or you just want to, you'd rather see it for yourself to know for, for certain. So anyway, um, the Essex County, Massachusetts, uh, where Salem is located, has put online um, scanned copies of the first four deed books that were ever recorded in that county starting at least as early as 1641, if not earlier, in a series of four books, and it's available online at a website called SalemDeeds.com, and there's a link on the left, it's kind of hard to see, it, it's small and I'll say historical documents. I'll go there right now to show you that. The problem I have when I do this is, of course, if I open up my browser, I can't see what the camera is actually capturing. So uh, be patient if I have a look. Okay, here we are. So this is actually the um, Essex, Southern Essex District, Registry of Deeds, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Over here on the left, there are historic records. And if you live in America and you have ancestors that were here from colonial times, and ancestors that lived in Salem, you may want to um, know about this and know how to get these documents. Now, what I'm talking about is a methodology and set of tools that are used in Linux. Uh, it also can be used in Windows, but I'm not an expert at. Um, changing the text. There's a different, slightly different methodology, and I'll get into it in Windows as to how to download files. But so far, I've only, I myself, with the skill, the skill level that I have, I've only been able to literally uh, create a list of all of the links 
uh, to the various TIF files, you know, and, and copy and paste them in a text file in an automated fashion to get them down. In this case, in Linux, we're actually using a bash shell script to automate the get command and, and, and a loop function um, and some math, basically, to call to download all the pages that are available. So um, now let's go back over here. I'm going to show you what kind of contents on here. This is this page. This picture here is a little bit of a fancier picture than you're really going to see. Let me make sure I got my sharpness to okay. I don't know if this is any kind of help now. It's not going to get any sharper than that for this thing. Um, never up the resolution but these files get so big okay so anyway that that picture right there as I digress um, is looks a lot better than what you're gonna see on these pages let me show you actually what is produced when you go in here I'll just go to uh, book one page one and I'll right click on say page four here I'm also gonna copy the link location to illustrate something but I'll just click on it and open it in, in Linux it's, there's an image viewer that I'm going to use and you can see here is some writing it's got 10 7 16 45 I'll go a little bit into dates at one point the year uh, started in March so the first month of the year in the middle of March so sometimes uh, April would be the first month of the year so when they you know when they have 10 there uh, they're actually talking about January, <laughs> if, the, if indeed that is um, January 7th, uh, 1645 here. And you can see they're a little bit warm, that's the kind of content you'll get, and there are, on each one of these books, as far as I know, uh, 750 pages per book. Okay, so, um, now, if you were to re do this, you were to download these images conventionally. You see that just to get one, I had to at least click on it, say OK download, or maybe if I should hit the checkbox, I'd still would have to go click, 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 and you know, yeah, 750 times four, that's about you know 3,000 uh, different clicks I'd have to do, and I'd be here for an awful long time. You know, one click may take a second, but 3,000 certainly isn't. You get tired, you walk away, you know. <laughs> you might click the wrong button, you know, things like that. So uh, instead, you might want to have an easier way to get these things. The first demonstration I'm going to do is in Linux. Now, the way to do this is you can use um, what's called shell scripting. And what that means is that you'll um, take, uh, create, a t you know, create a text file, and they could be created in, in Windows, would be Notepad. You know, the equivalent here is just under Applications, Accessories, and it's called Text Editor. At least is what Ubuntu calls it, but it's actually, um, I think it's Gedit. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so let me just show you opening that thing. Applications, etc., is Text Editor. You can see here. see here that it is gedit that I'm using. Okay, so once you open up this text file, now you can write with, if you add some other fluff to the file, and you mark the file as executable, you can actually run shell commands in an automated fashion by writing those shell commands in the text file, and then running the, running the text file you create. You actually can run a text file if you mark it as executable in, in, in Linux. Okay, so I did this yesterday, and I'm going to try to go over the contents, and it's very important, something in my eye there, what's that? No. It's very important to find out, um, when you're making bashful scripts, especially if you're doing a while loop, it's very important to have the proper spacing, and all I know is what worked for me. Um, <laughs> So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and open up this file that I created yesterday, and it's called, um, and I put it inside, okay, let me back up for a second. Now when you use what get from the command line, uh, if you just want to download a single file, you would just type, in general, you type the command would get, and then you type, um, 
the URL of, of the file that you want to download and in the simplest form and that that's it and it'll end up downloading that file right in the subdirectory from which you ran it from so I get the brightness to a reasonable level here got it what is that oh my god <laughs> okay so um so what I did is, is since I, there are four different Salem deed books and I don't want to just have my home directories with a bunch of uh, files that I can't determine one you know from what book it's from first of all and second of all if I'm going to be downloading other collections I don't want to just have a bunch of scattered files with no real labels but 002.tif or you know something like that or jpeg and all this other stuff I won't know what the things are so what I did is I created a folder called Salem Deeds to narrow it down and within those I created four folders called book one, book two, book three, and book four and I'm going to run the, the, the script that I'm going to create from within the book one, book two, book three, or book four directory. Okay I'll stop now because I don't want to lose it.